Okay, so welcome everyone officially to our first webinar of the year. So in 2022, we had the exciting news that two brand new learning pathways joined our course catalog. So today we have Anna Radzikowska, who's in AKT and also part of our curriculum team at the David J. Anderson School of Management. And she's gonna tell you a little bit more about these two new pathways, as well as the Kanban coaching pathway, which is a little more popular, it's been around longer. And hopefully with her presentation, it'll give you enough to learn more about the objectives of each of these new courses to help find the best one for you. So Anna, whenever you wanna start your presentation. Thank you very much, Lauren, and welcome everyone. Good evening, good day, wherever you are. I'm very happy to, I would like to say I'm very happy to see you. I hope to uh, that, that you are somewhere there. And uh, as Lauren mentioned, today we'll go deeper into the, the curriculum of David Anderson School of Management. And also, um, I hope pre for your questions, because, you know, I don't want to spend 40 minutes just, you know, giving you the learning objectives of each class. I really would like to um, learn more about uh, your concerns or maybe uh, your, your questions that or your doubts that, that you have. So uh, what we are going to uh, talk about today. So we'll start with Kanban Product Professional class, uh, then Kanban Leadership Professional, Kanban Coaching Professional. And at the end, I will tell you very shortly about other training opportunities at David Anderson School of Management. So let's start with Kanban Product Professional or, or as we call it, KPP class. So um, if we look at this learning path and uh, the, there is a suggested foundation of this class, which is your uh, KMP credential consisting of Kanban system design training and um, either of two Kanban for design and innovation class or Kanban systems improvement, uh, which um, both give you Kanban management professional credential. So um, then the next step, is a Kanban Product Professional Part 1, uh, which is about discovering value that we deliver to the client. And then KPP2, Kanban Product Professional 2, is maximizing value delivery. Um, what, uh, who should attend these classes? So uh, this is the class uh, which um, we target for the product owners, uh, product manager, anyone, you know, involved in the product part of the process, uh, knowledge discovery, uh, talking to clients, um, discovering together with clients what they really need and what they, um, what will provide them value. Also, anyone who oversees strategic decisions um, regarding the products, improvement, customer segments. So this is for, uh, this is the class and curriculum for this part of the process, uh, which is in very close contact with customer and understanding customer needs. What will you learn, learn in the first part of the class, which is Kanban Product Professional 1, which is discovering uh, the value? Uh, first of all, you will learn um, how to understand your market in that sense that you will start discovering who your customer really is. And then how to segment your market by customer purpose. Uh, you will learn the concept of the whole product, including three like, crucial elements, which is product design, implementation, and service delivery. Uh, then we'll learn how to define fitness criteria in terms of functional, non-functional requirements. And uh, also we talk a lot about uh, different metrics, which help us um, to first better understand uh, customer needs and be fit for their needs, but also to better understand our um, process and our um, business in that sense that you know what you should measure uh, to um, see whether improvements that you introduce are really working. So we'll learn about fit for purpose metrics and their analysis. Then in the second part of this Kanban product professional learning path, uh, you learn about uh, managing large backlogs. So this is um, one of the problems uh, or, or pains that people come to us with. So we have huge backlog with hundreds, sometimes really thousands of items. Uh, so we'll help you uh, manage these backlogs and how to deal with that huge number of items there. How to do successful triage at actually any step of your process, starting from, from the first moment when you need to decide what we do now, what we do next, what we don't do at all. And um, this is this most uh, this, this more um, advanced triage where we use triage tables or mental triage decision support application. Uh, we also talk about managing dependencies. So one of the hot topics recently. And also uh, we look at the risk 
uh, we try to understand risk, visualize this risk uh, using the risk profiles. And also then we analyze this risk profiles to understand what we should invest or maybe uh, what should be put for later. In terms of the class composition prerequisite certificate. So um, even though I told you that, you know, the foundation is KMP credential, it's not prerequisite for the class. It's, um, it's advised uh, to be KMP specifically going this um, upstream Kanban path, which is Kanban for design and innovation, uh, because it's much easier to understand some of the concepts um, later in KPP class. But even if you didn't take um, KMP with us, if you uh, didn't attend Kanban for Design and Innovation class, you still have access to some selected materials from this class, some pre-recordings, uh, so you can catch up with this knowledge and you are not lost in KPP class later. The class itself uh, usually take, uh, takes five days, four hours each, uh, so it gives you 20 hours uh, in total for the class. And uh, usually we just do it like one week, Monday through Friday. And there is, uh, as with all our classes, there is quite a lot of homework. So before the class, it is advised to watch um, all pre-recordings. So we have all um, lecturing recorded for you. Uh, you can watch it earlier. You can also watch it later after the class. There is also homework assignment. So some um, articles and case study that we work uh, on. And talking about recordings, we also record our classes. These recordings are only for the participants. So uh, three months after um, the class is completed, you still have access to all materials, to all recordings, pre-recordings, uh, class recordings. And this is something what our students uh, really um, appreciate because then you can always come back to this stuff. Uh, you can um, watch it one more time. And uh, the feedback that we receive is that sometimes, you know, watching it second or the third time, they are able to catch um, some details, which just, you know, um, were not uh, that focused on during the class or doing exercises. So this 20 hours that we meet are fully focused on exercises and discussions. So there is no, you know, live lecturing and slide sharing. Uh, we just focus on going deeply into this material that you have um, received earlier. And finishing this class, uh, you will receive uh, Kanban University Certificate of Class Completion and also um, completing both modules, so uh, part one and part two, you receive Kanban Product Professional Credential, the one that you can see here on the screen. Um, the second class and the second uh, learning path that we have is Kanban Leadership Professional. Here for the foundation, we also advise uh, you to be Kanban Management Professional because it gives you just this um, basic um, introduction to the Kanban um, method. And it's very useful to further get the most from, this, um, from these classes. The next step is Kanban Leadership Professional Part 1, which is Understanding Leadership and Kanban Leadership Professional Part 2, which is Actionable Leadership. So in the first part, we, part we focus uh, more on understanding what leadership is. In the second part, we really make it actionable. Who should attend this class? So this is the class for the leaders. Uh, those of you who are with uh, managerial responsibility, you must lead organizations through this challenging times. You know, every year brings something new. And it seems that every year is even more challenging than the previous one, even though sometimes we would like it really to be boring, at least one boring year this time. Uh, but no, it's always, you know, a lot of challenges and, and things to take care for. So if you are in this uh, leadership position that you need to lead the organization for these changes uh, and difficulties, then this is the class for you. Uh, if you are um, holding the operational management and leadership position in companies uh, which are pursuing this business activity transformation. So again, there are some challenges, there are some um, potential problems ahead of you, and you need to both um, go through it, you as leaders, but also uh, those uh, who are working with you. Or anyone looking for pragmatic, actionable, evidence-based uh, leadership guidance. So you not necessarily have to be leaders already. Um, this is useful because then you can bring your own experience and uh, we can work on your cases or discussion points. But uh, for example, if you are in the um, 
role which will lead you one day to this uh, managerial position, or you are aspirational leader, uh, then this class can also help you to better understand what you may deal with and how you can prepare yourself for that. What will you learn? In Kanban Leadership Professional Part 1, uh, you will look uh, much more closely to the seven levels of leadership maturity and the character traits, which are observed at, at each level, to better understand uh, where you are as a leader, but also uh, the people around you, uh, the other people in managerial positions, and how you can uh, describe them and how you can work with them, depending on what is their leadership maturity. Uh, how to recognize and interpret the human behavior. Uh, we also talk a lot about so sociology and um, how humans behave in groups individually, but you know, in groups people usually behave differently. Uh, so this is what we um, try to understand here. And uh, how identify and, uh, and how identity and purpose of individuals or groups can drive the change. In the second part of uh, Kanban Leadership Professional Learning uh, Development, uh, we look at this theoretical part from uh, the, the first um, part of the class in more actionable way. So we learn how to implement active feedback mechanisms that drive the change and improvement, how you can use organizational maturity model to take uh, actions in your context. So not only leadership maturity model, but also organizational maturity model and how to blend them together. And we also learn how to drive evolutionary change by selecting right metrics and also building this meaningful closed feedback loops. Um, how to hack culture with explicit values, decision filters, and how to build organizational resilience. Prerequisites class composition certificates. Um, similarly as for KPP, uh, there are no prerequisites for Kanban leadership professional class. Um, although the familiarity with Kanban method and the Kanban maturity model is advised. Again, if you are not KMPs, Kanban management professionals, or if you uh, didn't uh, go through Kanban maturity model class, or you are maybe not very familiar with Kanban maturity model concepts, then we provide this material to you before the class. So uh, this is these are additional videos for those who are not very who, who don't feel very comfortable with this uh, content yet, or for those who would like to you know refresh their knowledge. You will have all uh, materials necessary to actively participate in this class before the class starts. Um, the composition of the class is very similar as, as the previous one, Kanban Product Professional. So we meet over five days, usually Monday through Friday, four hours every day in live class. Um, again, focused on exercises and discussion. So no live lecturing, all lecturing and slides you have shared uh, before the class starts. Uh, in the class, we just discuss and, and do exercises, trying to you know uh, to put this uh, theory in your context. Plus additional homework assignments, videos, and a lot of reading uh, for this uh, specific class. Uh, finishing uh, these two parts, Kanban Leadership Professional Part 1 and 2, uh, you receive uh, the Certificate of Class Completion and KLP credential. The third um, learning path, which, as Lauren mentioned, is much, much longer with us, is Kanban Coaching Professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, this learning path is a bit uh, longer because a Kanban Coaching Professional is just one um, of the steps on the development path to become accredited Kanban Consultant. So we start with the foundation, which is, you can guess, Kanban Management Professional. Uh, then we have uh, two elements of Kanban coaching professional, which is Kanban maturity model and Kanban coaching practices. And then this final stretch, we have change leadership masterclass and AKC application process to become accredited Kanban consultant. Uh, who should attend this uh, ACP Kanban coaching professional path? So all Kanban uh, professionals, all Kanban practitioners who want to learn how to further develop organizations. So in the Kanban management professional classes, Kanban system design, and for example, Kanban systems improvement, uh, you learn the practices. 
So how to build Kanban systems, how to make policies explicit, how to visualize stuff, how to link work in progress, and so on and so forth. So in these two classes, we talk a lot about practices, but we also introduce some elements of the evolutionary change, working with people, dealing with resistance. Uh, so in this um, Kanban coaching professional class, now you will learn much more about this human part of introducing change and how to um, use this all coaching tools that Kanban brings you uh, to help people go through the change, uh, which may be uh, very, very challenging to them. Uh, all transformation initiative leaders, business managers, project service managers. So this is really the class for um, those who would like to develop themselves as coaches, um, helping people and organizations to go through the change process. What will you learn in this class? So um, the first part is Kanban maturity model class. This is where we learn about the Kanban the maturity model, which is organizational maturity model, uh, to define the organizational maturity in terms of the depth of Kanban practices and business outcomes. Um, we learn how to be able to evolve fit for purpose organization, understand the values. So we spent a lot of time talking about the cultural values, the culture of the organization, the leadership styles, and how to use the new Kanban appraisal tool to assess the organizational maturity. In Kanban coaching class, so this second part, uh, we leverage the specific Kanban coaching practices to implement this specific coaching tools. Uh, we are using evolutionary change model to drive this incremental change. So you will have a chance to, to use this particular tool, which is evolutionary change uh, model based on this canvas, uh, which, which you can just take with yourself after the class and use it on day one after uh, class finishes. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, social psychology, the cultural context of the change and how to approach leaders with le relevant pragmatic guidance. So the difference here between um, Kanban coaching class and Kanban leadership class is that in Kanban coaching class, you will learn um, more how to work with leaders, but you not necessarily have to be the leaders. In Kanban leadership class, you are the leaders. So um, you, you are in this managerial position. So we are just bringing uh, different tools to you as leaders, then we are bringing to Kanban coaches, working with organizations and leaders. Um, this time, this time, Kanban mentioned professional credential is prerequisite. So you can, uh, you can start with Kanban coaching professional class, skipping KMP, uh, but uh, we don't advise it because sometimes uh, People come to us without KMP being uh, attended before. And then um, they are a bit surprised that in Kanban coaching professional classes, we don't teach about um, practices, Kanban practice. No, we don't. This is the content which is covered in Kanban mentioned professional classes. Here in Kanban coaching professional classes, we teach how to drive the change, how to help organizations to go through change. So you are not learning about practices in this class, which is very important. And this is why uh, we really advise to um, have this Kanban management professional classes um, completed earlier. Also, um, if you don't complete Kanban management professional, uh, you will not receive Kanban coaching professional credential. So you will only receive Kanban uh, maturity model and Kanban coaching practices um, class certification, class completion certification, uh, but you will not receive um, the credential, which is Kanban coaching professional. Um, the composition of the class, so we meet over two weeks. This is nine days, uh, five plus four, um, three hours classes. And additionally, you also receive uh, recordings, pre-recordings before the class starts, so you can prepare yourself for the class. Uh, completing these uh, two parts of Kanban Coaching Professional, you receive the certificates of completion and KCP credential, but only if you completed KMP earlier. And I told you that this KCP, Kanban Coaching Professional stuff, is one of the um, steps on the uh, accredited Kanban Consultant Development Path. So to um, start uh, applying for uh, AKC, Accredited Kanban Consultant um, 
um, badge and then this whole accreditation. You need to first uh, complete Kanban coaching professional. Uh, then also you need to attend special change leadership masterclass, which is required for each uh, future AKC. And this class is currently delivered only by David Janderson School of Management and is delivered, delivered directly by David. Uh, so this is opportunity to, to sit in class with David and learn directly from him. Um, and then there is also the whole application process, uh, which is a, a bit longer and a bit complicated. And actually we spend a separate whole webinar uh, to talk about accredited Kanban consultant. Uh, so we did it last year. I really encourage you to uh, come back to this webinar and uh, watch it. This is where we invited some AKCs as our panelists. And um, this is where we told you much more about this whole accreditation uh, path. So this is where you can basically learn the details. Uh, if you want to learn more from us, from David Janderson School of Management, we also have three other uh, offers for you right now. So the first one is that uh, this Kanban engine professional stuff. So yes, we also deliver KMP classes, Kanban system design, Kanban for design and innovation, Kanban systems improvement. So the whole package of, of KMP stuff. Uh, so you can take this, uh, this bundle with us. And we also uh, last year started to introduce self-paced learning. So this is um, where you can access at this moment two classes, which is strategic marketing and customer experience and introduction to the Kanban method. Uh, so uh, you can just uh, take this class at your own pace. Um, there are no live sessions. Uh, you access uh, the recordings, you access the exercises, which you do whenever you want over the period of six months. And then at the end, uh, you can uh, attend the exam and you receive the certification of class completion. So um, I really encourage you to try this too, um, because then you can plan this learning process depending on your needs. That's it from me. Thank you very much. And maybe I will stop sharing for now and let's listen to the questions. Okay, thank you, Anya. Yeah, right now we're going to switch to a Q&A session of this webinar. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box and we'll go ahead and start reading them out. So Anya, the first question is for any existing KCP. So as the coaching path was around a little longer, um, I guess the question is, do you, um, recommend that any existing KCPs take a look and try to discover one of these new pathways or have they already learned um, um, enough information just from learning this KMM and KCP? It really depends on, it, it always depends. I'm sorry, this is the favorite answer of all trainers. Uh, but in this case, it, it depends on your needs. Because if you want to develop yourself um, in this coaching path only, then I would um, more encourage you this full a KCP Kanban Coaching Professional plus AKC, Accredited Kanban um, Consultant um, Development Path. Uh, because then you, uh, th this is just, you know, the coaching slash consultant um, development. Uh, but if you look more also in the other areas or say you are in somewhat uh, coaching slash leadership position, uh, then, uh, for example, common leadership professional class may be useful for you because uh, you will have a chance to look at some of these aspects in a different way. And also because, for example, the overlapping material in KCP, Kanban Coaching Professional and Kanban Leadership Professional is organizational maturity. So we talk much more and we spend, you know, almost two weeks in Kanban Coaching Professional classes, uh, taking you through organizational maturity and driving um, the change in the evolutionary manner. But learning the stuff, knowing the stuff is also important when you are a leader. So in Kanban leadership path, there is some sort of overlap, but you just look at this material in a totally different way. And you also learn much, much more about leadership maturity, introducing um, feedback loops, introducing metrics based on these feedback loops and how to uh, grow yourself as a leader and how to help others to grow as leaders. So for example, even if you are coach not in the leadership position, you still can try this class if you are working with leaders because then you also get some you know leadership tools um 
Kanban product professional and Kanban coaching professional not necessarily um, have a lot in common uh, because if you are working as a coach, usually you don't work as product manager. At least I didn't hear much about the similar cases, but we still have a lot of uh, coaches in our Kanban product professional classes. So um, those are coaches who are, for example, working with product managers. So they would like to learn the product management tools. Even if they don't use them themselves, they can help product managers to, to use this, these tools and these techniques. So um, the Kanban coaches or coaches more general are not the main target of these classes. So for leadership classes, those will be leaders. For product classes, there will be product managers, product owners. Uh, but still, Kanban coaches can or, or coaches can learn much, uh, can learn more uh, about these different techniques if they work with people in these positions. Okay. So the next question is, what's the path for fit for purpose? But maybe you want to highlight the differences between the KPP mm -hmm. course and the fit for purpose course. Um, yeah. So the if you know the fit for purpose content or you maybe attended fit for purpose class with us or some other trainers with us very very long time ago we don't teach this class anymore uh, but there are some other trainers especially in brazil that teach this class uh, then you will see that there is overlap of the content um, because the kanban product professional uh, part one is based on fit for purpose framework um, but Again, it depends on what you are looking for. So uh, Kanban product professional class is um, the, the target group for this class are people working with products, developing products, um, and uh, those who would like to learn more techniques of, of developing product itself from you know, start to the, to, to the end, especially in the second part of this class, which, is, um, which has nothing to do with it for purpose anymore. This is where we work with triage, with dependency management, with lead times, with risk analysis. Uh, this is the part where we um, develop this fit for purpose concept uh, in you know more end-to-end -end, um, process of understanding customer needs and, and delivering according to customer needs. So fit for purpose plus, uh, sorry, fit for purpose class is much more focused on uh, understanding customer segments um, delivering according to customer needs. In KPP class, we focus on this end-to-end -end process, um, which starts from from the customer needs, but then also goes through the whole um, pro, through the whole system. Also, um, you know, something very pragmatic. So, from um, the certification perspective, um, it depends on what you are looking for. Because if you are just looking for the content, then ideally if you just talk to us and we'll advise you the, the proper path. Because if you are looking just for the content, maybe the self-paced learning will be enough for you. You don't even need to attend you know, the whole class with, with all life exercises. Uh, because the power of this and the difference in these classes is also in the exercises. So the exercises between fit for purpose and Kanban product professional are totally different. The case studies are different. So we are just looking on different aspects of the same content. Um, and sometimes people attending Kanban product professional class are looking for a Kanban university credential. So to get this uh, Kanban university credential, Kanban product professional credential, you need to attend KPP class. Thank you. Okay, so the next class or question, sorry, is about the KCP. Um, mm -hmm. Do you recommend to take the KMM and KCP uh, subsequently, so one after the other? Um, yes, I mean we. This is also how we teach in the school of management. You know, maybe I will come back to my early days with Kanban when I attended Kanban system design class. So um, I attended Kanban system design in October. And then my trainer didn't allow me to uh, attend Kanban systems improvement immediately after Kanban system design. So for Kanban system improvement, I had to bring my own small case study to present during the class and to work on during the Kanban system improvement class. So, uh, you know, it all depends really on your trainer and approach to, to the content. So there is no one guidance that there has to be break or doesn't need to be. 
and it's all the same for KMM and KCP. Uh, so you can do these classes uh, one after another, or you can do one, then take a break and take the second part. It all depends on your learning style. Uh, doing these two classes in a row is pretty heavy and, um, and time consuming because if you take this class with us, this is two weeks, uh, almost two weeks, nine days of the class. And so you really need to spend nine half days sitting in the class, plus uh, all of these um, prerequisites, these recordings that you need to watch, it takes time. Believe me, I, I went through it. So uh, if you have time and you have enough energy, uh, you can do it one after another, If but you can also split it and um, there is no issue with that. Even recently we had... Um, in our Kanban coaching practices class, so the second one, uh, we had people who attended KMM class in October last year. So they had like more or less three months um, break. And they said that it helped them because they had a chance to and time to put all of this stuff in, in their head in proper order to start testing what they learned in KMM. And they also brought their experience, new experience and um, what they did over this uh, three months to the KCP class. So this is where I leave the decision to you. There is no good or bad answer. <laughs> also related to the, the co Kanban coaching professional. So do you recommend that they read the KMM book before taking the KMM class? Okay, so it's time for my anecdote. Um, Kanban maturity model book, although you may treat it this way, it's not the book which you take uh, to, to the bed and you read it before sleep. It's not this kind of the book. It's the guide. Like, you know, a few years ago, I was on a trip to Morocco, specifically two towns, Fez and Marrakesh, and I bought the guide to Morocco. Yeah? And uh, I just leave it through before the trip. And then when I was in the plane to Fez, I read this chapter about Fez. And then when, when I was in Fez, I was reading, you know, specific um, sections about this beautiful buildings that we've seen. Then when I was on the bus to Marrakesh, from first to Marrakesh, I read the chapter about Marrakesh. And this is how Kanban maturity model works. So this is a very heavy book. It's almost 500 pages book. There is a lot of stuff there. And not everything is immediately applicable to your situation. So of course you can read it. It's, it's actually awesome if you read it. Uh, and we have people who read the book before they attended the class. And then, you know, participating in the class is much more deep because you just have this knowledge. You start applying it immediately. But it's not absolutely required. This is why we uh, provide you with um, all of these pre-recordings. Uh, this is why we provide you with the guidance, which chapters you need to read for a particular day of the class, uh, where and on what we are going to focus on. Um, and the rest of the stuff you can read in the meantime or later. So, for example, here on the wall, I have uh, the Kanban, uh, the practice map poster from the Kanban maturity model. And, you know, this describes all of the practices from the Kanban maturity model. And some of these practices are applicable at level one. Some of them are applicable at level three or level six. And the, all of these practices are described in the Kanban maturity model book. So say if you recognize that your organization is maturity level three, uh, you not necessarily have to immediately read about practices from level five or six. You can, but it's not required. So I would advise to treat this book more like a guide, which you come back to often to the chapters or sections which are applicable at this particular moment to you or will be applicable in the near future. And, and just come back, to it, uh, come back to it frequently. And for the class, you can read it, but it's not absolutely obligatory because we will guide you which particular chapters or section of the book you need to read before each um, class day. The next question is about maybe one of the learning goals that we didn't mm -hmm. go over. So what's required to become an accredited, accredited Kanban trainer? Oh, trainer. 
uh, yeah, we didn't cover it because this is actually the learning path that we don't uh, have, um, we don't teach in David Randall School of Management. And this is fully covered by Kanban University. So I can tell you from my own experience, I know that this changed a, a bit because I did the train the trainers before pandemic. So it was just different, you know, life class. Uh, but what was required by, back then, and as far as I know, is still required. Um, so uh, ideally, you are Kanban management professionals because uh, you need to know this stuff. Also, you need to bring your case study to the class which you will be presenting and there is no chance to escape. Everyone is presenting case study. So this is the Kanban implementation you took part in. Um, and in the trainer trainer class, now it depends on whether it's in person or um, online. The in-person class took us one week, but it was very, very, very heavy week. So we started class at nine and we finished at 6 p.m. Um, but Actually, it wasn't the end. So we had a lot of homework uh, uh, during the class and also um, work assignments for the next day. So for example, when we were focusing on Kanban system design content, uh, we got the assignments of what we need to present and teach as if we were teachers. Yes. So for example, I was told, okay, Anya, so you do, um, you do slides and 100 to 120. And now you stand up and you do, and you teach us this stuff. Or uh, tomorrow you present this and this concept to us and you need to think how to do it, you know, in, in an attractive way. Or for example, when my trainers, um, so uh, huge thank you to my trainers, uh, but they challenged me a lot because they have seen which um, are my weak spots or which training techniques I don't like too much. So they... Um, they put me in this uncomfortable situation of using this particular technique to, to share the knowledge. So actually we finished the official part of the class at six, but then I came back to my hotel and, you know, I opened the books again and they prepared for the next day until 10 PM. Then, you know, falling asleep for a few hours, waking up at five or six, running to the hotel where we had the session. And so, you know, we, especially if we had like a group assignment, we met at 7 AM before the class started to prepare for the class so it was you know after one week we're all dead like seriously dead at the airport uh, but it was really really great i think one of the best um, learning experience that i went through right now it looks a bit different because most of the sessions are online and i don't know exactly how the sessions look because i i've never been through it i just know that this is two weeks instead of one and it's not the full day it's i think full uh, half day session um, over over two weeks but the main uh, prerequisites or requirements stay the same so you need to know the content because in train the trainer class you don't learn about kanban uh, it's the assumption is that you know this stuff already you know it very well so you are able you know to just stand up and teach and uh, so no one teaches you about kanban um and what is more, no one, um, you are expected to know how this Kanban knowledge is presented in the classes. So, you know, knowing what this Kanban method is one thing, and then uh, knowing how to uh, teach about Kanban method using the materials of Kanban University is another layer of it. And you need to have the case study. So then you go to the train the trainer session and you are being assessed and you are being approved to teach one, two, three classes or maybe none of it. Uh, but uh, for more details, I would really like to, uh, I'm encouraging to contact with Kanban University, info at kanban.university. And, uh, you know, there are my wonderful colleagues and they will guide you with all of the details. <laughs> Okay, another question. So um, why doesn't any certification require an exam? So um, basically this question is, if you pay for the course, are you going to get the certificate? Do you want to talk a little bit about our vetting process? <laughs> um, I mean, there is no, um, there is no option to get certificate without attending the class. So the the, the aim of, of the class and also 
the aim of your participation in the class is that you are active and this is a part of also trainers work uh, to to make you active and to make sure that you participate in the class to the extent that you are able to uh, it's we always treat it very individually we don't have uh, very heavy packed classes and uh, we are able to very quickly um, see of whether someone maybe feels uncomfortable with, for example, the, the class setting or some work assignments or some exercises. So if we see such a situation, we are always in individual contact with our attendees. Because the most important for us is that um, you take most of this learning for yourself. And you you take this learning, you are able to apply this this learning. And also that's why our classes usually don't uh, last for like one day. Mm, because when we have more time with you, and all of our classes require more time with you, uh, then we are able to quickly react, but also, you know, to, to put some improvements during the class individually with, with you as students. Um, so that's why at this moment, um, there are no exams at the end, because all our students and all our classes are very individual in that sense. So we know when there is any um, additional, for example, any additional learning required. Because sometimes it happens that also students need to or want to repeat some parts of the classes. So this is always individual, but um, usually there is no problem with that, as far as I know, Lauren. Great. Um, so we have another question about uh, becoming an a KCP or AKC. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way to find a mentor who will help coach a person on their path to becoming a KCP or a KC? Do you have any recommendations? Uh, actually, you will receive recommendation probably. So uh, your mentor has to be AKC, current AKC. So you just, you cannot have any person. You need to choose from uh, the current uh, accredited Kanban consultants. And if you don't know any, uh, then you contact again info at kanban.university. I mean, when you start your accreditation uh, path, uh, you will be in constant uh, contact with Kanban University. So um, all these questions uh, will come up rather sooner than later. And if you have any doubts about it, you don't know how to find mentor, then my colleagues, most probably Stephanie, uh, will help you to find the proper person. So there is no problem with that. Yes, the mentor aspect of the AKC program is something we talked about in our previous AKC webinar. So I really recommend you check that out. Also, starting this year, um, we're actually going to have a guest AKC presentation in every session of the masterclass. So about you know 15 to 20 minutes of the masterclass are actually going to be dedicated to a, what's the AKC program? How do I um, apply for this? What are my next steps after taking this class? It's great. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, so do any of these certifications require annual renewal or a fee or something no. similar to the PDUs? No. So going off that, Anya, can you take a moment to explain the difference between these um, course certificates and the credentials? Because I think that's sometimes a confusing thing. Mm -hmm. So the difference between getting, you know, the course cert uh, attendance certificate for the KMM class and the KCP credential. So uh, the credential, KCP, for example, Kanban Coaching Professional Credential, um, this is kind of the proof that, that you are like, I don't say accredited because it's something different, but you have the seal of approval from Kanban University that you are Kanban coaches. And you can use this title of Kanban coach um, approved by Kanban University. Um, you can use the item. If you want, you can use three letters after your surname, like Anna Radzikowska, KCP. Um, the certificate of class completion is just proof that you completed the class and nothing more. So if you just attended the, for example, Kanban system design class or Kanban management uh, or Kanban maturity model class, you got the proof that you completed the class, but you are not yet approved as Kanban coaching professional or Kanban management professional. Um, so that's the main difference. For example, if you are taking um, the class with support of your employer, 
uh, what they usually require is the certificate of completion, not necessarily the credential. The credential, the seal of approval is for you. And this is like your official title, if you want to call it this way, uh, approved by Kanban University. You cannot use this title uh, without this credential and with just um, confirmation of class completion. Thank you. So this is something we get a lot. Um, so especially because with these new KPP and KLP pathways, mm -hmm. the CAMP is not a specific requirement for these courses. So in what circumstances would you recommend someone skip CAMP training and go directly into KPP one, for example? I would say mm -hmm. that at the non circumstances. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I mean, the Kanban version professional path is something that is really helpful. And sometimes, not very often, but sometimes I meet people who say, you know, I know everything about Kanban. I just skip these classes and I can move on. And so far in my life, I've met one person who didn't take KMP classes and really knew the stuff. So he had like really, really vast knowledge about the Kanban method practical application of uh, the Kanban method, practices, uh, principles, values. So he just learned himself outside of the class, just doing it, but for a long time. Uh, except for that, uh, most of uh, people who said that I know this Kanban stuff and I, I don't know why I'm sitting in this class, when we started to learn, uh, it was like, actually, yeah, we have this Kanban board, and that's it. Uh, so uh, most of, um, in most of the cases, uh, this is um, really helpful to go through, through Kanban management professional because you learn really a lot of practical stuff, um, a lot of practices, Kanban practices, uh, which which help you um, just just work with your processes. And you know, even if you know basics. Uh, there is a lot of like additional small tips and tricks that you can take from your trainer, but also things that you can take from uh, people sitting in the same class. Because every single time, and you know, I, I'm teaching these classes every month. Um, every time people come to the classes with really great stories, great examples um, of implementations, awesome experience. And very often we get this feedback that I learned a lot in the class from the content, uh, but I also learned a lot from um, like my co-attendees. So uh, this is why I, I really recommend you to take this class. And also this way you avoid disappointment because then when you are sitting in, for example, KCP classes and you, you already know the stuff. So when we are referring to some basic aspects, you don't feel lost. You just know what we are talking about. Um, so this next question is, can you describe a working day of a KCP in a, the organization? So what are the activities? So I guess uh, addressing that first is if it's a role and sort of what uh, this person would typically do. You know, I'm just trying to think about the answer, which will be general enough. Um, typical day. Oh my God. I, I could tell you what this, uh, the, the Kanban coach helps organization with, but how typical day looks, it probably depends on the organization. Um, so maybe from the more general perspective and based on my experience. So when I worked with organizations, different ones, uh, having this Kanban coaching professional knowledge and experience, uh, what I helped them with was um, identifying where they are today and uh, identifying their what they struggle with. I mean, usually they knew what they struggle with, but they struggled with so many things that, you know, finding these focus points was, was difficult. So uh, this is what my first days usually uh, look like. So um, 
it was you know talking to people um, looking for different artifacts that they have in their organization like visualizations not necessarily content posts different visualizations uh, the tools that they used um, the um, meetings that they held the policies that they uh, kept in place or, or different procedures so this were these are the the, the first days uh, then I did this assessment of their maturity and this assessment may be done on different levels um, so this was the second thing I did so having an idea about their uh, maturity um, I was able to find um, or create the roadmap of improvements for them starting with like small daily stuff really small um, but even this small stuff sometimes was really a huge change for them. Um, and also preparing some plan for what we should focus on, say, in the next three, six months. Or where we could be in, in a year or so. Because, you know, these are the questions that managers will ask you if they hire you. Okay, so how long it's going to take us to be great again? Okay. Let's let's see. So this is this is the question you need to answer. So having Kanban maturity model, you are able to see where you are today, what you need to do next, like the, the immediate improvements, what aspects of the culture you need to work on, and how using the model, using the practices, um, and uh, what you can do further. But this further is always emerging and it's always adjustable based on what you've done with people. Um, and then you just help them going through it because some of these changes that you suggest can go like this in five minutes in one group of people with the second group of people you will spend a month just talking about it and trying to come up with a solution so you need to be open for, for these adjustments and you need to be open for, for people and the way they are the way how they behave, the way they resist the change, for example. Um, and then you repeat this stuff. So you see that you introduced the change and this change, um, this change either worked and brought you some and organization benefits or this change didn't work and you need to roll back. You need to do something else. So you repeat this stuff, trying making things better and also observing how this organization is changing how uh, how these services that you are working with are changing and what you can do next so that's basically and how does it you know look in a typical day i don't know i didn't have typical days maybe if you ask me how it looked over the weekend and i open my calendar then i would tell you okay well thank you anya I think that was our last question okay. for today. Um, but if, as always, if you think of any questions that you didn't get a chance to ask us in the webinars, please email us at info at DJA.com and we will do our best to get all of your questions answered. Or if you want to talk to one of us about a more personal approach, which of these courses we think is the right fit for you and your objectives or learning needs, just email us at info at DJA.com. Yes, so, and yeah. I'm always, you know, there for you. If you don't know which path to choose, just just let us know. We'll schedule a 30 minutes meeting and we'll figure it out. And I hope to see you in one of our classes soon. Yes, so thank you, Anya, and thank you everyone thank you. for joining. And we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.